Hello everybody, Princess the Bear here. We're back in Coronado. I'm so excited. I've been waiting over a year to do this experience. Yes, so we have been waiting since before the press panini to do this. This is the Sangria University at Coronado, especially the class they do in making your own sangria. So excited. So we're gonna go ahead and hopefully make a mess. Be sure to salute. You heard the girl. Folks, how are you? Uh -huh. Thank you. Good. Good. What is your folks' name? Perfect, right this way. All your toppings. Toppings. Cheers, right? Okay. And I'll bring yours over in just a moment, sir. Right, thank you. Of course. They have ice cubes in them. Oh, right, because it's sangria. They're supposed to have ice cubes in them. Um, for those of you that have um, a concern about allergies or dietary preferences, all of you should have everything met. Um, um, I believe everyone has been spoken to about their allergies and whatnot. Everything is safe for you to enjoy. Um, in front of you, that is all for you to enjoy. So the sangria plate, if you're ready to start sipping that, feel free. Um, I'm going to go through in detail of each sangria. We also have recipe cards provided for you to take home today that go along with uh, each sangria that we have. Uh, curated for our uh, in-house sangrias here at Three Bridges Bar and Grill. And you also have your uh, little snack in front of you. It's going to be our roasted corn dip, which is one of our house uh, recipes that our chefs have come up with. It used to be a secret menu item here, and it's become so popular and no longer a secret that we just kind of put it on the menu. <laughs> um, so it's almost going to be a roasted corn that's um, charred on the grill, and then they toss it in with a tahine, which is a Mexican spice blend, um, some uh, smoked tomato aioli, and pomblado peppers, and cotija cheese. But everything I just said is actually the plant-based version, version of it. So you can't even tell, but it's 100% plant-based. There's no dairy, no eggs, no meat, no nothing, just amazing, really good ingredients that taste great together with our house fried tortilla chips that are lightly salted. Um, also in front of you, you have um, some juices. Those are going to be for later on today in those little shot glasses there. You have a strawberry puree, uh, pineapple juice, and apple juice. You also have a bowl of fruits. Um, those are also going to be for later on today. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be going over a little history about sangria, a connection with Disney, and then at the end of class, I'm going to have you take note of the flavors that you like and don't like in your sangrias. And you're going to be able to pick out your own wine and your own liquor, and then you're going to use those juices and those fruits to create your own um, sangria at the end of class, and you'll be able to write down your recipe if you like to recreate it at home. And lots of good things that I am here for you, so if you need assistance in any type of way, I can help. <laughs> but uh, to get started off, also, how many of you have been here before? <laughs> no one. Oh, what? Yay! Here. Welcome back. Thank you for everyone else who has not been here. Thank you so much for joining us. Our normal hours are 4:30 p.m. to midnight every day, um, and obviously our little fun classes in the afternoon. I'm so happy because the weather is perfect. <laughs> it's like the best day to drink sangria. Um, so let's go get started with that sangria. Uh, when you're comfortable, you're more than welcome to take your mask off. The plates on the side are for you to put your, plate, your mask on if you'd like. You don't have to. You can use it for whatever. Um, but that's that for you there. Um, so to get started with your first sangria with the strawberry at the top, it's going to be our sparkling sangria. This one is definitely our most popular one. Well, no, I'd say my favorite. Second most popular for sure. Um, so this one's going to be sparkling wine. Peche de vin, which is a peach liqueur from France, and some lemonade, a little bit of lime juice. So go ahead and give that one a try. The unique thing with this wine, um, or this sangria rather, is that the cava is made in the exact same method as champagne. So champagne is made in the Champagne region of France. Cava is made in the cava region of Spain. It actually uses the same exact three grapes Carariata, Chirello, and Macabeo. They do a two-step fermentation process. Once in stainless steel tanks, the second process is going to be in the bottle. So the bottle of the wine after they're in the stainless steel tanks, and they set them at an angle so that all the segments can kind of filter up to the neck of the bottle. And then when they go in and remove those, it adds that really creamy, nice texture that's very light. 
It's not as like, um, I wouldn't say it's as dry as champagne. It's a little bit um, on the maybe like middle sweetness side, um, but very, very well balanced. So if you wanted to pick this one at the end of class, this one is called our Kava, so the sparkling wine. And it's definitely gonna hold up to like lighter flavors. I wouldn't put too many heavy things in with it. Moving on to the next sangria. Also, I'm gonna move on to the next sangria. You don't have to chug the first one if you want to, by all means. This is your day. And, uh, <laughs> you enjoy it however you prefer, but if you want to save a little bit and at the end of um, the tasting and go back through and try everything once again to see how you like them, definitely go whichever way you, you feel comfortable. Um, so on to the next one is going to be the Sangria Blanco, the one with the lemon. So this one is our most popular one, first about the sparkling. Uh, this one is going to have the Macabeo grape. It is a one one grape blend, so it's a single varietal uh, wine. It is grown in many different regions of Spain, and when it's grown in France, it actually has a different name, but same exact same exact grape in flavor and body. Uh, so this is the Macabeo, which is our white wine, it's a little bit on the drier side. And it's mixed with passion fruit puree, which is going to add a nice little citrus punch to it. And then it has a little bit of lemon juice. So the first one had lemonade, so a little bit lighter, a little bit sweetness to it, undertone, maybe a little bit of tartness. This one has more of that really strong citrus flavor. You'll get a little undertone of a floral from the St. Germain elderflower liqueur. And then there's also some orange liqueur in there as well. We use an orange liqueur from Spain, which is distilled with orange peels. Um, but we also can use Triple Sec, Cointreau, Grand Marnier, any one will do just fine. And yeah, I think that's it for that one. So what do we think of that one so far? Good? Tasty. I think that one's a really good one for like any day. Like you could be having it with food, without food, hot day, cold day, Friday, Monday. <laughs> Mid day. And then for our next sangria, it's going to be our sangria rosado. This one has the raspberry in it. This one is definitely our booziest sangria. So for this sangria, we have rosé wine, of course. And then we have strawberry gin and apricot brandy and raspberry puree and apple juice. So this one has a lot going on with it. So it's kind of a little full taste to it. I like that. <laughs> this one I've seen to be like a hit or a miss sometimes. And then some people are like, I love this. It's strong. Yes. <laughs> Sangria. So in Europe, there's an EU law that regulates 
um, that sangria to be sold as sangria and have a um, uh, dollar amount to it to be sold in exchange for that to be called sangria and must be made and produced in with all either Spanish or from Portugal uh, wine, liquor, juices, fruits, everything um, accordingly. So it can't be a mix of both, but it has to be one all from Spain or all from Portugal to be called sangria. It must also not have any less than 4% alcohol by volume, 4.5, excuse me, 4.5% alcohol by volume, and it cannot have more than 12% alcohol by volume. And there's a couple other um, regulations to go along with it, so they're a little bit strict when it comes to selling sangria in Europe, but at least you know you're getting what you're, what you're paying for. You're getting that classic, that traditional sangria, so you know you're getting good stuff. However, we're in a Walt Disney World, so ours do not follow those regulations whatsoever. Our rosé sangria definitely breaks probably all of the rules on that one. <laughs> so we like to have fun with our sangria here, and we're definitely going to have some fun with it later when you create your own. So. Rules in Europe, no rules, kind of. Today. <laughs> to, to an extent. <laughs> so go on and um, taste through your sangrias again if you still have any left and um, think about those flavors that you like and the flavors that you don't really like too much. And then I'm going to come around and take your order for you. What I'm going to be asking for is your wine preference and your liquor preference. You'll be choosing from um, one of each of the sangria bases of wine, so the cava, the sparkling, the white wine, the rosé wine, or the red wine. You get to choose one. We'll bring you about two and a half ounces out of that with some fresh ice and a new glass. That way you can create your own in a fresh glass with no tainted flavors from the previous ones. And then you get a choice of apricot brandy, orange liqueur, or um, peach knots to add some extra flavor into your sangria as well. And those are all included, so we'll bring those out as well. And the liquor will be one ounce um, of the liquor that you choose. So I'll come around, I'll just write down your order for you. And then um, I'll go over uh, a history of the sangria, like I mentioned, and that little connection with Disney while my assistants are uh, preparing our orders for us. I'm nomming on some corn, and I'm spilling it too. I'm just about my fourth or fifth time that I've had this corn. It gets better every single time. Even though this is a smaller portion, this corn hits hard. University is cool. I like the university. While you're thinking of what wine and liquor you want to choose, you have your strawberry puree, your pineapple juice, and your apple juice. And those Sparkling are is my favorite one. And um, I figured since the weather's warm, I actually paired up with the uh, culinary team and we grilled those lemons for you. So those lemons are freshly grilled today. Nice. And we also have um, a fresh lemon in your bowl, some citrus. This one's my number berry, two, the rose. Berry, my number three is the regular red. And then the white is my number four. If you try drinking each one of these one after the other, it is definitely a weird experience in your mouth. I do not recommend, just drink them all. If I was to rank mine, honestly, I'm definitely gonna go for the sparkling first one first. You see, I obviously drank it all. Then I would probably go with the, uh, the basic, the fourth one. It's the most basic, but it's the most like palatable and drinkable to me, especially in warm weather. And I'd go with the uh, lemon wedge, fourth. And even though I liked how boozy this one was, it was my least favorite flavor-wise. So far, I think it works. It's fun. Um, it's interesting the way they have it set up, but you know, everybody's socially distance It feels very safe. Um, the little appetizers and like the display for the fruit and the explanation is good. Um, it's going to be going fairly in depth, and like it's a good like afternoon event for you and a few friends. I don't want to get the apricot brandy. Okay, perfect. 
And then what are you thinking for your wine? I guess the sparkling? Yeah. I was just saying to them over there, I feel like it's the perfect day for bubbles. Like, it's like the best weather. You're in the sun, it's good, it's a bubble. Yeah. Got brandy, that's gonna go so well together. Perfect. And for you, sir? I think I'm gonna go with the peach liqueur. Peach liqueur, perfect. But I want to try it with this uh, rose. Yeah, perfect. I love that. We see us kind of like the grandfather um, style of sangria and also the introduction into mold wine. Uh, back in the day, they didn't really drink water. Water was filled with bacteria, so it was really just for like cooking and cleaning, not really drinking. So they drink wine. And you know, much like some of us, it happens to the best of us when you open a bottle of wine. You don't finish it in time. It starts to get a little bit of a vinegary flavor, a little smell to it, and doesn't really taste that great, not very palatable. So to liven up the wine again, what they would do is they'd boil water and add it into the wine with some spices, some fruits, some juices, kind of gather some stuff up, throw it in a big pot, let it macerate and get all those flavors and juices going, and then they would filter it through what they called a Hippocratic sleeve. I have no idea why it was called that. That's just what it was named. Okay. A Hippocratic sleeve. Okay. Yep. And then the liquid that came out of it, they took from that name of the filtration system and called the liquid Hippocras. It actually is from the same guy who came up with the Hippo law. Um, he must have been bored and just like coming up with things because that's under the same um, umbrella of the same person who came up with that. Uh, so that's just a little fun fact about that. But obviously we're not at Hippocrats University, we're at Sangria University. <laughs> so we're gonna fast forward a little bit. Sangria kind of goes through all these different phases from all around the world and it's not, and none of them really, really stuck too well. So fast forward to the 1800s in uh -huh. the Caribbean islands. They come up with what was called Sangaree. This one is a little gruesome. They named it Sangaree because it was always a red liquid. So Sangaree's direct translation is bloodletting or to bleed. So that's kind of why they named it that, because it was always just that really rich, really deep red uh, color to the liquid. Also not at Sangaree University. Uh, so <laughs> other names that we go through in history, there was a Zerocopita, which was really kind of interesting. It was wine mixed with soda, um, Coke, Fanta, Sprite, lemonade. Really glad we didn't really stick with that because Sam said red wine doesn't know what they're saying. She's all in. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I would love to try it just to be like, how can red wine? Let's see. Yes, right? I think it's right. I can see that. Her, I think it's right. Be great. But the fans is so interesting. <laughs> um, it goes through some other names, too. There was a long drink. Um, Lots of different names, lots of different places, locations, all with the same concept of aromatized wine to liven up that wine. Uh, so where do we get sangria from? Sangria is from Spain. So like we have the regulations in Europe and Spain, that's where all the sangria comes from. So you know what? They came up with it. They can make all the rules they want. <laughs> so how did we find out about sangria from Spain all the way here in the United States? In uh, 1964, there was a World's Fair that took place. Uh, so I'm sure I see lots of nodding heads. Lots of cool things came out of this fair. <laughs> but to backtrack, 1962 in Seattle, Washington, there was also a World's Fair. That kind of has nothing to do with sangria, but um, how there's regulations of uh, sangria in Spain and in Europe, there's also regulations about World's Fairs. The Borough of International Ex Exhibitions has um, a board of chairs that are represented by larger nations that kind of regulate who can and cannot host a fair, where it can be, how often it can be, who can be there, what they can bring, how many people can go, how much the cost is, where the fundraising comes from, all of these things. One of the regulations is that one nation cannot host a World's Fair more than one time in a 10 year span. So since the United States hosted a fair in Seattle, Washington in 1962, technically, we should have never had one in 1964. 
But they went against the board. They lost all their funding. They lost all the larger nations who are supposed to be there to kind of be the forefront of the fair to represent the United States and bring in all of the stuff from larger countries from around the world. We lost that. So they did a fundraising. They got their money. They got it up and going. They used the same fairgrounds from 1939 in uh, Queens, New York City, Flushing Meadows, Corona Park, and took up 646 acres of land. And since all those larger nations that really kind of just take away the shine from all the little ones weren't there, the little ones were able to rise up. The most popular pavilion to that. Can't talk. <laughs> the most popular pavilion at the fair was actually Spain. It took up to a two-story um, concrete building, which has now been fun fact and full of them today. Uh, um, relocated to St. Louis, Missouri. It's now the um, Hilton Downtown, St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, so it's the same exact building, they just picked it up and moved it in um, roadway and railway all the way to St. Louis from uh, Queens, New York City. It was the Marriott, then they sold it to Hilton, so that's where that is. But, um, backtrack to the fair. Uh, so at, at the fair there was, um, along with Spain, there was other 90 nations, I believe, represented 110 civilians. Spain had three restaurants in their two-story building. They had art on exhibit from Salvador Dali. They had art from many other famous artists. They had flamenco dancers. They had a garden. Um, three of their restaurants, uh, of their three restaurants, one of them was named Toledo, which, you know, a little connection with uh, Toledo up top, which is not open yet, but hopefully soon. Um, so that's another little uh, insight there. Also, beautiful city in Spain. But out of Toledo came tapas in Spanish cuisine and Sangria, and that's kind of where it hit the ground running. Um, with the fair, it was actually the longest running fair. Now the regulation can't host it for longer than six months. This one went for two six-month segments in 1964 and 1965, April to October, both years. And there was about 51 million people that went through this fair. 51 million people going through this fair, tasting that sangria and loving it so much. That's just kind of where we see it hit the ground running in modern day history. Along with Walt, wanted to kind of test out the waters and see how popular some attractions were. So he brought It's a Small World, which was hosted by Pepsi Cola. He brought Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln, which was hosted by Illinois. I have no idea why, it's just rare to say, I guess. Um, General Electric hosted Carousel of Progress. And Ford hosted Ford Speedway, which eventually became the People Mover. It was designed with a very slow, roofless moving cars that were just kind of there. And, just kind of and eventually became the People Mover. And with the success of all of those attractions and those 51 million people walking through that fair, well, actually, um, that once he saw the popularity and the success of all those attractions, that's when he actually went under his aliases and um, toured the land of Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida and actually purchased the land under all his aliases to eventually become Walt Disney World. His original idea was to actually turn the fairgrounds into an East Coast Disneyland and didn't really like that too much. And then here we are, a couple of decades later, drinking sangria in Walt Disney World, all because someone went against the rules and the regulations and had a fair in 1964 made it super, super popular. And Tom, I'm very happy with that. That's what I have to go Thank you so much. And then other fun facts I really like to share about the fair that have nothing to do with today. But I just really appreciate all the things that come from World Fair. Out of 1964 also came egg rolls, Sushi, Chinese takeout, and Belgian waffles, but at the time they were called the Bell Gem. And eventually became Belgian waffles. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I have for y'all today. Um, it's also um, said that neither confirmed nor denied, many things have come out of that specific fair that have kind of um, encouraged some ideas and concepts that are found um, in Disney parts across the world. Uh, the focal point and the entryway of the fair in 1964, also the similar focal point of 1939 fair that was held in the same park, is a 12-story stainless steel replica of the world with the hemisphere. And uh, then there was also some uh, 
very few air-conditioned lounges that people could go to that uh, spend more money at the fair for them to relax in. Uh, a few other things too, if you look into it, I found lots and lots of things that are very, very peculiar. Lots of um, ideas coming out of there. So, do we have any questions today or comments? Fun facts? I obviously love them. Alrighty, well I'm going to go grab your wines and your liquors. Um, just a heads up when you get them. There's no so, wrong way to do it. We're not in Europe, we're not following rules here. You are putting, you're going to get a glass of wine with fresh ice in it, and then you're going to get your liquor. If you want to add your liquor first, your juice first, whatever you prefer. Um, your juice is, like I mentioned, are about two ounces. Your liquor is going to be about one ounce, one and a half ounces. And then um, I kind of like to think of sangria like a blank canvas. So your blank canvas today is your wine glass, your cake you is your fruits and juices, and your paper is just going to be that little bar scene we have there for you. So you can just make your own little creation. I'll be right back over for you. Thank you. Because it, it's multifunctional. Right? Because you put it down and it stirs and then like you can... It's multifunctional. I know that. That's all I know though. Thank you very much. Of course, an apricot brandy. Thank you. To your health. I'm kidding. Apricot brandy and champagne. And then I think I'm going to add strawberry. Apricot and strawberry is a thing, right? Ask the people. You guys can tell me if I just ruined this drink. Now we have a ribbed spoon. To stir our drink. And oh. I know, I'm about to take the lid <laughs> so slow. Maybe the rosemary too, just for color. Yeah, I love the rosemary. I think it adds a nice little touch. Yeah. Here's my drink, a sparkling apricot strawberry rosemary drink. Okay, actually it's not bad. I quite like this. This is like a better version of that, what was it called? The uh, Rosado. Rosado with less liquors and a little less strong but still very flavorful. Eat your heart out, Bear. I win. Let me go ahead and uh, try the Princess Concoction here. This huge sprig of rosemary. And uh, you guys know how I feel about uh, Christmas trees in my drink, basically. Those strawberries, a nice touch. She got the apricot liqueur, right? And then the sparkling. This is going to be interesting. I would, I would make this at home on the regular. I don't know where I'm gonna get rosemary like this, but uh, this is very drinkable. Princess, you may have something here. You have to show this to the community how you made this. Four to five plus. As for me, I got the uh, rose wine with the peach liqueur. Go ahead and pull that in there. And then, so we have apple, pineapple, strawberry. So I'm going to ruin the princess's day. I'm going to go ahead and drop this in here with the lime. I'm going to do these two blackberries here. I'm going to do pineapple juice. Because like she said, there are no rules when it comes to sangria. I doubt anybody's gonna want this recipe, but we're still here. To the community. No, that is not bad. That's a princess. Three out of five. 
some lemon, lime, pineapple nastiness right here. It almost tastes like a goombe smash, which I'm not exactly mad at. I'm surprised that it, it has flavor at all. I win this round, but this is a contender. Is it really a surprise that I would mix together from this a little bit? No, it does not surprise me at all that you would make something together that tastes like a goombe. Not one bit. And apple whole juice and apple juice. It's really sweet. That's how I like my sangria. It sneaks up on me. This tastes like a, almost like the pina colada without the coconut. That's not horrible. It's like watered down pineapple, basically. This uh, other pineapple caption. I'm never gonna say no to pineapple juice in anything, really. I'm gonna make pineapple juice a thing, a more regular thing. Ooh, I just buttered mine. It's more pineapple juice forward and balances well. You get the sparkling? Oh, yes. Three and a half out of five claws. The presence is a slight edge, but this is also really good. And for Miss Natasha. Hey. Is it Natasha or Natasha? Nastasia. Nastasia. Oh, I didn't even see the S. I'm so sorry. No Nastasia. Congratulations. It's okay. It wouldn't be a proper graduation case someone pronounced your name wrong. Correct. Exactly. That is so true. Speech. 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 This one didn't cost me $64,000. <laughs> Yay. Mom, I did it. I did it. My mask. So that has been Coronado Sangria University. It is better than the GQ wine tasting, I gotta say. Yes. Better than the food and wine, vegan and wine um, pairing that we did at Food and Wine 2019, yes. I wanna say. Definitely. I'd say the value is definitely there. Oh, yeah. This the is price where you're value. basically getting a flight, your own personal app, plus a little bit of history and you get to make your own drink at the end is more than worth it for like a nice afternoon chill this is like so worth outside it. of the park. Uh, Tip is included in the $45, which is. we learned. The, the staff, everything else was excellent. The setup with our current Panini procedures was doing very well. I think keeping us distance and safe. Agreed. It was a good time. And I suggest if you get the opportunity and you have the time that you should definitely do it. If you're gonna plan a resort day, include in your resort day, Sangria University. Just send a little email and, and be on your way, it's great. But, we definitely want to know what you think of San Greg University. And I need to know in the comments below, whose drink do you think was better? That's always going to be a place to find us. If there's anything else you guys want us to do around Disney Orlando period, that's going to be the place to find us. Hit the notification bell if you want to see other videos like this. And we have new videos five days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. We will see you soon. Be sure to subscribe. You heard the girl.